Okay, we will start with the second decade of today. Uh, please welcome Nuno Graça Moura. So, uh, I would like to begin to thank you, say thank you to the organization and obviously a special, very warm thank to, to Rodrigo and Amelia for all his kindness and for the enthusiasm they put into things, which I believe uh, makes the difference. So thank you so much. Uh, it's, I'm very pleased to be here in a school that I left 20 years ago as a student, but that I proudly keep feeling as mine also. Um, when I started thinking about what to, to show, uh, I was, uh, first of all, uh, trying to find a specific topic to talk, to talk about uh, that could resume my work, but I wasn't able to do it, so uh, I'm just um, talking about my projects, uh, giving a general overview on, on my work, because I honestly believe that uh, it's mainly unknown from, for the most of you. Um, so. Uh, I'll begin, I'll show you five projects and I'll, believe, uh, I'll begin with the first one that was built like 12 years ago, the first that one that was completed and end with my last one that was completed two years ago um, and meanwhile maybe one can understand a certain evolution. Um, they are separated from 12, 12 years from each other so uh, I believe in 12 years people change and see things in different ways. So when I was talking about the theme, looking for a theme, I just resumed it in the worlds of Aldo Rossi, which is, has the best definition of architecture. It says, I believe that time and place are the primarily conditions of architecture and therefore the most difficult ones. Uh, it sounds like a cliche, but that's also what I uh, think about architecture. So I also would like that my presentation at the end uh, cl clarifies what interests me, what interests me not, what family, be, be, what my, my, my projects, which family they belong to, uh, and so on. So uh, as I said, I'll show you five projects. Uh, the first one is, in fact, a group of projects, so it will take me more than half of a presentation uh, showing one project, and then the other, five, the other four will be faster. So, um, This is a project that began 2003, and it's a relatively strange situation. I was invited together with other architects to work on, a, on a housing um, in, uh, near Lisbon, in Óbidos, which is a, an old medieval town in Portugal. And this housing has, had also a lot of uh, public uh, elements, like public buildings and the golf course and so on, which is something that for architects is usually very strange, like this sort of, it remembers some golf resorts. Um, but there are somehow also good examples of these things, like Utsun in Denmark, uh, Baragan in Mexico, and. Even Mies van der Rohe designed the golf clubhouse. Uh, the client invited lots of architects. The main Portuguese architects were there represented. So Cisa, Eduardo Sotomoura, Aires Mateus, Carril da Graça, Gonçalo Dill, and so on. Also some foreign architects like uh, David Shipperfield uh, and others. And architects like me who hadn't done anything or almost anything. So when every project begins with a visit to the site, and this was what we found. We got out on a bus, and we, there was really nothing to see because um, the site was huge. It was not built. It was a, a, an eucalyptus full of eucalypt, uh, eucalyptus trees that were taken out uh, because eucalyptus damages the soils. And uh, so we came back with, no, with a huge lack of references to start working. This project had some specific uh, things. 
all the materials for all the architects were defined. So we had like a grammar of, of elements that we could use. And at the end, it was nice to see how all the architects with the same means made things so different. So this is a first model of my first project there. Um, this is the site here. And the plan, as usually these sort of housing schemes uh, are, have two problems. First of all, the, the, the plans are usually bad. And secondly, the clients are full of cliches of what people want, what people don't want, what they like, and so on. The, the plan uh, uh, pre uh, previewed seven buildings, two-story buildings here on this plot. And I thought that generally there was a lack of order in this plan. So I condensed them all in a very uh, long building, in a very radical building. This uh, building is used for houses. It, it has 30 houses with two bedrooms, relatively small houses, 120 square meters each. So I got a very radical approach uh, in answer, I guess, to the lack of order of the same of this area. I had also a problem that CESA was building on the other part of the street, directly in front of me, and I had worked with him, so uh, I knew my starting career could be at the end in the first project if something would go wrong. So, well. So this is the main facade of the building. The houses are completely close to the street. There is, is only a single wall with some entrances. And it's completely the opposite of Caesar has made. I, I didn't, we didn't work together. So it was nice at the end that we, to see that we've made somehow absolutely different projects and that at the end they feel somehow, fit somehow well together. The houses are painted white, first of all, because I, I liked, I had, it has to do with the site and, and it was a regulamentation. They had to be painted white. And people ask me, look, why are they so close to the street? Well, it reminds me of the old dwellings in the southern Portuguese countries. This is an image a little bit further in the south, but this is a typical Portuguese village in the hottest cities, in the hottest parts of Portugal where you, the streets are mainly a, a white wall with entrances. So this is the general plan here. You have here the entrances of, of each house. See this project, which is more uh, dancing in front of me. And uh, each house has the bedrooms facing the, the, the street. So I put a courtyard, a coast courtyard, and then it opens to the common area facing the south. So the, 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 the relation between the interior space and the exterior common space is always made through uh, spaces, through courtyards. Oh, sorry. So the plans are uh, relatively simple. There is a common entrance for each two houses, uh, an entrance hall, two rooms facing a, a courtyard, two bedrooms, and the most social areas are open to a to a courtyard that is partially closed with some elements. We'll explain why. And uh, in section you see that one of the regulations was that the roofs had to be uh, covered with plants. And I wanted to not only see this as a finishing, but take advantage of it. So I plan to uh, cover also the courtyards with plants, which is something that is, happens a lot in Portugal. I remember that. In my youth, I spent vacations on my grandmother's house in Douro, and there was a beautiful courtyard where you spent almost all the time. It was completely covered by these sort of plants that provide a fresh atmosphere. And here, the, 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 the courtyard is partially closed, uh, covered, sorry, with a, a slab that has to do with these Mediterranean outside spaces. So this is the entrance, very banal. And the, the other view, so this is, I was here, and there's Caesar's houses looking at me. Uh, so this is a view of the courtyard. The materials are very rough. So these houses are very, very cheap. They costed a maximum of 605, 
650 uh, euros per square meter, um, which was possible because at, at the end there were 600 houses built together. So, uh, and the materials I've chosen. Uh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Wow. Uh, these are ceramic tiles that are typical here in Portugal and also in Spain and in Morocco. And they're mixed, so traditional materials mixed together with more industrial, industrialized materials like aluminium frames. And this is the back courtyard facing the common space and the lake there. And sorry, you see here that this outside space is partially uh, enclosed by some concrete walls that I placed in, uh, placed in an irregular form so that it creates several uh, spaces also in, in, inside. So this is a more open space and this space has more privacy. And this is the image we get from the outside. I didn't want to see that there were 30 houses just by another. I wanted this, the building to look like a, a big building due to that question that um, uh, somehow uh, I wanted it to be very strong. And it was funny because it was, uh, the project was completed in 2005, and in the same year I bought an office, which is this, is my office until now, and it was really strange because I got to know that it had the same facade I had made in my project. I obviously knew this project because nobody invents anything, but it was really happened by chance. So when, only when you are in front of the facade, perpendicular to the facade, you can get an overall view when you are in a more diagonal um, view, you, you get a, almost a closed wall. That's what I also wanted to achieve because you can also only see inside the several houses when you are in front of them and when you look diagonal, it looks like a white wall. This is another view of the part of the building. And of course, there were references uh, like, I, I like very much this architect from Venezuela, so uh, Carlos Raúl Villanueva, whom, um, whose work I've studied and is obviously present here and mixed together with uh, all some popular architecture images that I did not know. This is very nearby. Uh, a few years ago, a, a collaborator of mine bought a book which I did not know that had these images of popular architecture uh, of this region. And uh, it's strange that it has something similar. So, which means I did not invent anything because I believe architecture is not about inventing new things. It's about discovering the possible connections between existing things. Uh, then the client was uh, happy because he sold all the houses in 15 days. And he asked me, we need more fast. And I said, I can't make the, most, the, the same project because the projects are attached to the certain specifications of the site. But that's not always true. Sometimes projects are possible to make with slight changes in other places. So this is very nearby. The other project is over there. And I've made, these houses are inside very different, but the principles are the same here. And from the back part, it's a, a different relationship to the, to the ground, but it's more or less the same principle, like a big block uh, sitting on the grass and not uh, so fragmented uh, situation as it was previewed in the plan. Uh, but there was another uh, site here which was very different and where I could not make a project of the same type, which was this one that topographically was very complex the only entrance here, the other houses are there in the corner. Topographically here, the only entrance is here and you enter through a, a very nice uh, plateau, like a promontory overlooking the valley and the, the horizon there, which is a very nice view. Underneath in the valley there's a, a lake. And I plan to build the houses on the slope because this has a very big slope. These are like, I don't remember, 24 houses or 25 put in uh, very small, only 50 square meters each. They work like, these are for rental for tourists. These ones, not the other ones. Uh, 
So this is the general plan. So the houses somehow managed to repeat the shape of the existing topography. And there's the entrance. So you enter through the roof here. Always two houses here. Sometimes you get views from the, other, the, the space underneath. And this is a general scheme. So you enter here. You have a, a bedroom above, a double height space, and a stair. And underneath, you have the common uh, living room. And then a very big outside space with uh, some uh, bris soleil to provide shade to this space. And the bris soleil are planted with uh, trees so that, with the plants so that it gets at the end uh, like a curtain, a green curtain providing shade to this areas here. In Portugal, we must take care of the shade, because otherwise we will fry inside the houses. So this is the entrance of the house. The bedroom is closed by a curtain, and you get underneath. All the materials are very rough, handmade in the south of <coughs> Portugal. And this is the general view from the lake. So you can feel that how the, these elements follow somehow the topography. Then there was another project. These, these are single houses on a, on a slope here. Uh, it's a very big slope. Underneath, there's a valley, which is uh, free of constructions. And uh, I had this part of the slope to deal with. Uh, and Eduardo Sotomora made this part. So I had, again, the same problem, because I worked a lot uh, in Eduardo's office. So. But we've worked together on a new strategy for this whole slope trying to find a rule for the houses to be uh, put inside the ground and put on the ground, sorry. And uh, so for me, the most important is the group, not each house, not each object. So there are like abstract masses, mass of constructions put inside this slope, creating always <laughs> courtyards in between them that's, that are the main spaces of these houses. And the houses are always closed on two facades, mainly almost three facades, and opened on one of them to this space so that you get privacy on this space from this house because the neighbor has a wall. So the idea of the courtyard is, uh, of the southern cultural cor cor courtyard is always present in here. I'm going to show you uh, only general schemes of these houses so that we don't lose so much time here. So this is the general view from the back from the, the valley here, and the houses are here. They look very abstract. The, the gardens are not uh, already made. I don't know how it is now, because I had problems at the end with these clients, and I quit. So I um, don't go there for three or five years. And this is the general view with my houses and above the houses by Eduardo Sotomor. So there are five or six typologies. These are almost the main ones. So generally, either the street is on this side or on that side. Here you enter through. Uh, you enter always through spaces in between outside and inside. So this is a courtyard, a corridor, and all the spaces of the house are uh, organized in a relatively complex situation that is com uh, contrasted with a very um, clear, uh, radically clear shape of the, the house. So when people are young, they do radical things. Then they start getting wiser. And <laughs> uh, sorry. And this is a, a, a another scheme, an L-shaped house with this courtyard, and then the same house. I'm going to talk mostly about this one. But here you can see that the houses are placed like this so that the gardens have the views, because it has a wonderful view of the, of the Atlantic Ocean to the north. Here the gardens are to be pla uh, planted so that you get uh, like a curtain providing um, pr privacy. And you get here, well, here there was foggy, but this view is really, is really nice. So you see that the houses only have a big opening and sometimes a swimming pool, and the neighbor is closed, so that this space is, the, is not really an outside space, is an inner space without a roof. 
And this is the L-shaped house with the same principles and the pool in here, which I did not want to look like a pool, but more like a, a place, uh, these sort of elements that you use in, ag in agriculture, like this. And this is another model, another project. I, I'm describing one of these in more in detail. So you enter here, you have a stair, a corridor, a very simple organization, kitchen, dining room, and living room, all facing this veranda. And then the more private zones, like three bedrooms and, and the bathrooms, facing a courtyard in another direction. So he, this is private, and this is more for the social living of the house. And in section, you see how it uh, attaches to the ground here. And the same principle that these courtyards may be covered with plants, providing shade. So this is a very abstract uh, facade to the, to the street. You enter here, and this is a garage. The entrance courtyard that is to be planted here, covered with plants. And the, generally, the spaces inside, the living rooms and the bedrooms, still with no plants. The material here on the roof, on the floor, is a very rough uh, slate from Brazil. The porch. Porches have a very big importance in popular Portuguese architecture not only for providing shades, but as, social, as a social uh, part of the house also. And this is the view from the exterior. And as you may see in the other book, I've seen, I've told you about, this seems more or less a sort of the same typology of houses. It's nearby. Well, then I was invited to uh, to draw the, some of the public buildings of this uh, housing. The first of all is a garage, a maintenance building here. I made together with a colleague. It's a very big building that we wanted to hide because it's simply a garage and a warehouse. So it's only a concrete wall hidden in, in the slope with two doors, one here, one there, all made of concrete. And I thought to try to make it a little, more, a little bit more pleasable to put a courtyard inside so that people can work here outside and not inside a garage, because it's strange to get all day inside a garage with such a, a landscape. So it's very elementary. Also, there's a, an axis with a courtyard, the warehouses and the, and the garage, and then some offices and uh, other things. So this here you feel the space, the courtyard, and they really use this for working, which is something that pleases me. The central space and the space of the garage, which is very, very rough. We, we even had not have the money to finish the roof. I got angry, of course, but at the end, it's OK, because it's only a garage. So, so. Then I, bought, I also made the tennis club here. And it's in a very nice situation because it's a valley here overlooking the, a beautiful lagoon there. And so I, planted, I, I planned the building to be like a dam. Uh, so the, the entrance, the main, sorry, the building, the drawings are not very uh, clear. This is the street here, and the entrances are made through here, through the, through the height of the, of the roof. So you climb down the stairs, you have a courtyard, and then uh, a restaurant in here and other things. And then this is a service entrance, which you do this. And this is only a wall with an opening over and, a, and a porch again, like the houses, overlooking the, the, the lagoon. And the tennis fields are in here. So this is the entrance. There's the lagoon. Well, not very well to see, but it's really a nice, a nice um, view. So what I've talked about, the entrance through a courtyard and the way that the building relates to the topography. Inside there's the stair, the courtyard, it's a very simple 
bar, restaurant, service areas, and uh, toilets for the tennis players. Here. So here you see the, the entrance where you get the view from this. This is not finishing uh, photos. Uh, uh, by the way, I took the photos myself. All of the photos you'll see are taken by myself. It's a very pragmatic reason because I don't have money to, sp to spend with professional <laughs> photographers. It's true. Um, so, sorry. These are uh, some views of the interior space. These are actually renderings. I don't have photos because the client, when it was uh, ready, put a decorator without my consentment trying to arrange the space, and it was really awful. So I prefer to show my fake three-dimensional things. Of this, would, this is what it could have been. So in a certain way, it's more, um, it's more true than the, than the reality. So. And this is the, the dam, the window, and the tennis field. So this by now is all of trees. The gardens are already made. So. I then also made, this, I guess this is the last project of this series, the clubhouse, the golf clubhouse, which is a very difficult project because golfers have, uh, are not uh, easy people to deal with. They only think of golf. The architecture is not important. So. Oh, again, there was a difficult situation. I'm sorry, it's difficult to see here. There's a street here. And there's a huge building here that is a hotel that is designed by Eduardo Sotomora. And this, the only thing I knew from this project was this uh, plan. In, by now, it's not the same anymore. But I somehow tried to follow and to continue the same shape, because this is a huge building, and mine's is really, mine is really small in, in relation to that. So I didn't want to put something very different from that. So this, is, uh, so this is the model, the street here. You enter here through a covered canopy here. You leave your golf clubs here and so on. And th there's a restaurant and some other public areas in here overlooking a valley and the, with the lake. And there's the, the entrance for the golf uh, uh, cars. And they start playing the, the first hole. They are starting playing on the roof. That was one of the main. Uh, regular limitations for this building. So it looks quite abstract for the roof, and it opens completely to the valley. So it's like this. It's almost like a, a thick slab with all the technical and structural things, and a simple uh, glass for the public areas. Inside, you enter here, entrance, bar, restaurant, and other service areas, and the garage for the golf cars. Uh, so this is a view from the entrance here. And uh, it, outside, it's all made of limestone, which is a stone from this region that is very cheap, although it doesn't look like. And I was so sad with the decorators that I made really something a little bit stupid. Uh, and I tried to invent a wall where they couldn't put anything on. So I've invented this shape, which at the end is OK. And uh, it's true because they don't have anything on the wall. So, okay. so this is a view from the bar overlooking the landscape and from the restaurant also. And from the outside space here, there's a, a, a veranda also overlooking, because golfers have to uh, look at the whole last hole. There's a lot of complete, complex regula regulations about c golf clubhouses. I don't know anything about golf, but it's like this. Well, the second project is a house. Uh, it's not a house. It's two houses I've built nearby, near Porto, in Marco Canavias, which is a city about 40, 50 kilometers away. And I built it for two brothers, one brother and one sister. Um, they had bought, sorry, this beautiful, uh, oh, sorry, this beautiful uh, plot here, 
It's like seven hectares, and it's facing the river here. It's a wonderful view. And it's made of platforms that were agricultural platforms that sometimes have retaining walls that are somehow sometimes up to six meters high. Granite's very, very strong platform. So these are the two houses. This is for my sister, and this one is for my brother. So I'll talk first of all this, of, about this one, and then about this one. So the first house works as a continuation of one of the retaining wall, granite walls here. Uh, I've made three projects for these houses, some of them with windows and doors. The third one is this one, and it looks like an abstract stone inside one of these retaining walls. So this is a granite wall, this also here, and it's like an abstract piece put in there. The entrance is through here. You climb down this stair and you go inside. The upper floor, in the upper floor there are the bedrooms facing a courtyard that has a, now then a, a window for seeing the river. And underneath you have the public, the more social areas, kitchen and so on. And a very big veranda, that's where we meet in summer. So this is the entrance here and the entrance is like a hole in the ground. Like this. It, more, it was more or less designed there on site. Because the, the, also the workers, they are not very skilled. They don't, they don't know how, very well how to do, how to read the architectural drawings. So um, it was not easy to work. So this is the entrance stair. Sometimes these things happen. A rock that appeared while, while opening the ground here. And you see here the plants, the entrance, the four bedrooms facing the courtyard, and underneath there's the, the, room, the living room, the kitchen, and here there's a double height room with a snooker uh, table, because they like to play it. That connects both, both floors. Oh. This is the view from the rooms, and the rooms are protected by a mesh, uh, by a group of doors with a mesh, so that you can look, get, not look so much inside. And from the inside, you get a nice view from the outside. So this is the court, oh, sorry. The, the courtyard for the rooms and the view. There's this view and also a small window with a bench there so that you can sit and watch the river. <coughs> And this, uh, these are the spaces underneath with the living room and the porch here and the private space, the, the common sp area here. So this is like the retaining walls here and the abstract mass that defines the house. I've also drew some other walls here and other elements that are found in the, in the plot, like uh, an agricultural tank for uh, water. And also, I've, drew, I've drawn a, a swimming pool here in this place, which I did not want to look like a common swimming, blue, blue sky swimming pool, but, almost, but more like one of these elements that you find usually and that are used for agriculture. And that's the swimming pool here. Well, you don't see the swimming pool, but you see the relationship to the river, which is uh, quite impressive. So these are the sort of walls that we made on site without drawings, because it's impossible to draw this, this sort of stones. This, these are the stones that are available there. So. The other house is for a brother of mine, where it existed a house already that had been destroyed. So the problem, the most difficult problem of architecture is to define the exact place for the buildings. So this problem was solved because it, it was the old, pro, the old house there, and it was OK. And the house is built with, partially with the stones of the old house, which are these ones. It's really a very simple house uh, because uh, I, don't want, I didn't want to make something that looked so radically different from what it existed here. It's a wall with a door and a bench. You enter here 
the living the bedrooms are on the upper floor, the living room uh, underneath, and then there's a big space, which is the main space of the house, double height, protected by this uh, curtain of trees and of uh, brise soleil with, uh, with, with plants that provide shade here in, this, in summer. So this is mainly the most important part of the house, which is an inner space, but fully opened. And as I've said, I didn't make any execution design of these projects. It was a risk. But it was of no use making it because they don't know how to read the drawings. So I've put them on the walls. Sometimes it happened that I got a phone call saying, we don't have the drawings anymore because the painter painted the drawings. But <laughs> it was like this. So these are the two uh, very elementary plans. The floor above, the Three living, three bedrooms with uh, uh, toilets and so, and so on, and underneath the common space and the kitchen, and this is the the outside space. Oh, sorry, this is the views from the rooms, which are very banal. Oh, the be the bathrooms and the stairs here, the living room and the porch with these el brise elements and the double height, connecting the, then to the outside space. This photograph doesn't have anything, but they have it all full of elements like benches, tables for sitting. So this is the main living room of the house. And this is the outside space here. Oh, sorry. The third project is a house that I did not build but is one of the houses that I would have liked to build, but unfortunately the client has no money to do it. That's life. It's a, for a cousin of mine, near, near the houses for my brothers, and it was a very strange site because it has a very um, dramatic slope and it's all full of these trees. These are cork trees that you cannot cut off. And that, uh, um, so because cork trees are less, uh, a little bit uh, sort of national Portuguese trees. And uh, so you didn't have place to put the house. The only part is above, but the entrance is here. And it also, it also provides a very dark atmosphere in the, in the plot. Only in the certain parts of it you can feel the, the horizon. There are, you can't see it here, but these mountains are really beautiful because in, in winter they get snow, which for a Portuguese guy is something that is not uh, usual. So. so the problem was that the house couldn't be, couldn't be built here, and the only place would be there. But the question of the views was really uh, uh, difficult because you don't get anything because the, the trees are very opaque. So, the entrance is through here, and I've planned the house around the courtyard. So there are two volumes, so to say. There's a horizontal volume here with all the more social parts of the house. And then I build a tower because the program is also too big. And I thought that the tower in front of, in the middle of the trees is always a nice theme. So this is a theme for uh, uh, the building for the bedrooms and above. There's a library, because he has an, an, an amazing um, quantity of books. So this is the model. I was playing a lot with the facades, and it's nice to be in this building we are in, because this facade was obviously copied from the one in the school. But it's just a joke. I didn't, it, the project was not finished, so these were the, the bedrooms and the library here. And these are the common areas, the social areas. So you enter here, you have the courtyard and the door. And this is a special apartment for guests that they wanted to, with this relation here. So this is the plant here. The plant, sorry, the entrance. So you enter to the second floor, so you don't have to climb up three floors. You enter to this floor, you, you, you go 
under in the master bedroom and the one floor above in the bed in the li uh, sorry library which has a double height and then there's a mezzanine also above here underneath there are living rooms dining rooms kitchens and so on and this is the apartment i've told you about for guests so there was the question of, that interests me about the openings. How do you open uh, a window outside? So uh, I, had, I had made all, most of my works in this direction, as the window, as an absence of wall. Then there is also this possibility as a window framing the view. And also this window, which I find one of the most beautiful windows in the architecture, which is mainly to get light inside. That's why it has curtains that don't let you get, let, see through. And the sofa is facing the back to the, to the, to the window. So drawing a window is, a, is a, a very complex situation. There's the entrance here to the courtyard. The courtyard with the entrance door. So these are renderings, of course, no? And this is the, the main, uh, the living room. I was studying a lot about the work of Adolf Loos, which is mainly my favorite architect, so I didn't resist making some quotations on him and even put his, his Egyptian stools in my renderings. So above, there's the library with the double height. Well, the fourth, the fourth project is uh, a museum, I, it's a competition for a museum in Spain, in southern Spain. It's a competition I lost, as I usually do. Um, but uh, that's life. So there were two, two plots available here. One of these was here, and the other one was in, in an old building. This is in a, in, in a city, a small city in southern Spain called Puente de Genau in near, near Jaén. And the painter was from here and he donated most of, the, uh, of his works to the, to the city. So they wanted to, to build a, a, a building for, for his works. And as the city has no special interests and, and is very small, this new building was to be uh, the most important building of the city. So I plan to build this building also as a, a civic center of the city. So I play, there's a, a very nice, I've chosen this, this plot here, which is a platform, and to put the building above. So there are a stair and a ramp entering the, this, the, this, the, the entrance courtyard of the museum. And then the museum is organized by a ramp, this idea of the promenade architecturale that we also see here in this building we're in. And so the ramp provides also access to this whole area which is full of olive trees. So this is the entrance here and the ramp, and the building is over there, like a sort of a new city on top of it. I may have been obviously influenced by these constructors nearby in Alhambra, which have a topographically a very uh, similar situation. And so this is the, the model of the, the, um, the museum. So you enter here through a courtyard, and then you have, have a ramp that leads to the roof. And here all, are all the uh, living the exhibition spaces around the central space here that can be a, an auditorium or a living uh, or a exhibition space and above is a courtyard for uh, the projection of cinema or a theater at open air which in summer in southern space in Spain is usual and very nice sorry the plans are, the plans are not very well to see so the, you have here the entrance courtyard the ramp that organizes the whole, the whole scheme here. And these are service areas for the artists and so on. And you enter here in the main exhibition area, which is here. And here there's another courtyard, a covered courtyard that we called Impluvium because it has uh, 
a skylight and it rains inside. So that was a stop at the end of this uh, path before getting inside the, the exhibition. So this is the general scheme I've told you about. Entrance, the ramp, and all the spaces around this central element. Here, here there's, a, there's the bar and, and such elements that have a connection to the upper floor. And these are the sections here. So you see the, the entrance courtyard with two cypress, uh, I don't know how to say it in English, that are used in the southern uh, countries. And the ramp, the, this, this, court, this impluvium courtyard, and the exhibition rooms. These are works by the, by the painter, who's called Santiago Idañez. And the elevations. So we wanted this to look like a part of a city. And I plan to do it in earth, in compacted earth. I think it's called rammed earth, because it has to do a lot with this region. So this is an image took from internet about, I've studied how to build this thing. Oh. Sorry. And obviously, I was influenced by this earth uh, cities you can find in southern Europe, or in this case in Morocco, in Ebenadou. So this is the entrance of the space, the courtyard here with these two trees. The ramp. The structure is a mixture of earth, concrete, and wood. Well, at least in the competition. And then, oh, sorry. Here you find the entrance for the exhibition spaces. These are all paintings by the painter. The entrance to the auditorium and this impluvium space. And the, the exhibition rooms are uh, completely closed and covered with a mesh or a Teflon uh, uh, textile that hides all the infrastructures above. So we have a problem because all, as all the walls are made of earth, you don't get, uh, it's not easy to put the paintings inside, to hang the paintings, sorry. So you have to hang them all. But in a competition, that's acceptable, I guess. And in between the rooms, you have windows to let you remind you, to remind you that of the spaces outside that obviously have a lot to do with the spaces inside. And then you climb up, so the ramp comes here, and then you have this court, another view of the courtyard, and the access to the olive trees park that is above. So this area is all conceived as a public park with a, with a building, a civic center inside that has a museum in my proposal. And the last project, it's uh, finished in two, three years ago. And I must admit it was a project that I had most pleasure doing. It's a refurbishment of uh, a group of housings in Vidago, which is an, a city, a small village in the northern Portugal. And this space belongs to a, to the, a very big garden of a very famous hotel, which, which was refurbished by, by Caesar. And they gave me this uh, element to deal with. There was no specific program. They just wanted uh, rooms that they can use for special activities reunions, parties, and so on. So the problem here was this was, had been extremely trans transformed. And the ancient buildings, agricultural buildings, were, farmers' buildings, were not to be seen in certain parts. So my project was to, about trying to keep the existing image and atmosphere and to rediscover it partially where it had been uh, badly, in my opinion, badly changed. Of course, this gets also uh, a certain degree of invention. So this is what I found. This is the barn, uh, cellars there, and then, and then there was a house for the, the farmers, and these were all agricultural buildings. Yeah. So this is the plan. This is the house here, 
Underneath there are the agricultural uh, services, the barn, the cellar, a place for animals. And this used to be a, a nice place for uh, drying corn. Now it was full of constructions. Of course, when you are making renovations, sometimes it's strange because you almost destroy the whole building to rebuild it again. And there you always um, start putting in um, some changes to the original building because the fact of being original doesn't mean that it's right. So there's a certain degree of authorship also in rebuilding. You see. Oh, another strange thing here, sorry, is the amount of technical things that we get in such a poor building. So that's me looking quite astonished. What do we need all these things for? But that's life. So this is the general view of the buildings at the end. Of the group here. The areas that were to be, that anciently were the farmer's ha house are painted white due to also to hygienical questions because this painting also uh, provides uh, better living conditions inside. And the other rest, the other, equipment, uh, the other buildings are kept, are kept very rough in granite. Like this here. So this is space in between the buildings. There were also some ruins that we kept inside. And this is the new building I have discovered or invented. I don't know why, what. There's a nice text about, from a, an Argentinian writer I like, mo, I like a lot, Jorge Luis Borges, you already know, which says that the origin of the world, of the word invention and discovery is the same. So in, we think that inventing is something that nobody has done before, but I prefer the word discovery because it sometimes let us know that it's something that exists and we only have to try to find out what there is or to put the connections that provide us new things. So, and this is the group again. So I've studied a lot the, the, the grammar of the existing buildings. So all the details are, made, are new, so they are modern, but based on the old ones, which is a strange situation. So it's both old and new in the same time. This is the space of the, the ancient cor, uh, place for, for drying the corn. Sorry. They use this for parties, and it works very well. And there's also some, uh, some uh, toilets there so that they can use it better. Here, everything very banal, I guess. I had so much pleasure that I drew everything, all the details, uh, handles. Uh, this it was to push, so I put a, a small thing of, um, uh, I don't know, a rope and all the, hand rail, uh, the hand, handles. And uh, each time there was an accident, there was uh, a nice history to talk about. So here the trees, we put the, the, the ceramic around the trees and the problem was solved. And this is the general view of the main house, so the entrance here. This was to be the house here. And I've learned a lot from this building. For example, there's a door which has a, a tree in front of the door. I thought it was very Japanese, because in Japan it happens a lot, but we find it also here. So the culture, the, um, sometimes popular culture has a lot to do in all parts of the world, so it, it creates a certain type of protection space between the outside world and the inside. And these are the, uh, these are the inside spaces. So I took some walls out of these spaces to get bigger spaces, took some windows out that, in my opinion, were not in the right position. And it was also a very um, cheap work, although it doesn't look like. For example, this is a floor that we found in some old uh, timber pieces of an old building 
that were more than 100 years old, so and we, we made the floor with these rests, so recycled these elements, and kept some of the old elements inside. And this was more or less my, the grammar I used to define these spaces. I tried to use color a lot in these spaces, but I wasn't able to do because uh, I don't know why. But, uh, well, I made lots of experiments with green, rose. Uh, at the end, I painted all white. I think architects are not, uh, should have more, uh, in school, more teaching about colors. Because popular architecture is, has a lot of colors, and architects made everything white. So I painted it because I wasn't able to paint it with another color. But here in the kitchen, I did not resist, and I painted yellow, uh, sorry, light green. Uh, and I discovered, I had in mind, in memory, the, my grandmother's kitchen was light green with a huge uh, oven there. Um, and I got to know that usually kitchens in Portugal were light green because of the flies. Because flies don't like light green, light green. Which is obvious, because I was in Egypt in a light green uh, village in the southern Egypt, in Morocco, in Chef there's also everything is painted light green, in Mexico also, so it's a general popular question of popular architecture. So this reminded me of my, it has nothing to do, but the color reminded me of my grandmother, so for me it was good. And that's it, so this is the last, last image of the, the group. And one thing I like here a lot uh, is that at the end I somehow feel, when you go there, you don't feel very well what the architect has done and what was made by other people. And uh, I find this really uh, important for me. And I've started with an important l lesson by Aldo Rossi, and we'll finish with a sentence from a writer I like a lot, which is Karl Krausen, that has a lot to do with this thing I've said, which is the career is a horse that arrives at the door of eternity without the horseman. So architects make projects, then they get out, and uh, the horse wins the race. So thank you so much.